Mr. Laser here. Over the past several lessons, we've been focusing on China. We talked about their ancient history, we focused on their geography of China, a little bit about the modern history and communism. Today, we want to focus on what's going on in China currently. We're going to take a look at their economy, we're going to focus in on their population, their government, and then some other problems that China is encountering right now. So let's start off by looking at China's economy. So there are three different types of economies that we want to explore as we figure out what's going on with China and, and with their economy. Our first economy that we want to take a look at is called the market economy. Now let's imagine for a second uh, 20 years into the future. You're graduated from high school, you've gone off to college or a trade school, and you want to get a job. You're going to be out there looking for a job. Um, do you want to be able to pick and choose whatever job it is that you want to do, or do you want the government choosing for you? My guess is, is that you're going to want to pick the job where you're going to work. In that case, you're in the perfect country. You live in the perfect country for that in the United States because we have what's known as a market economy. In America, we practice a market economy where you can be a doctor, a lawyer, even a teacher. Let's take a look at some other things that happen within a market economy. In the market economy, what to produce is determined by consumer preferences. How it's produced is determined by the people who are making the goods, who are seeking the profits, and for whom it's produced is based on who has the money to purchase those goods. The second type of economy is known as a command economy. In this type of economy, the government owns all of the businesses and makes all of the decisions, such as where people work and how resources are used. Up until the 1970s, China practiced this type of economy. The third type of economy that we want to focus on today is a mixed economy. And this is currently what's taking place in China now, what they have there now. In this type of economy, the government uh, and private citizens make business decisions together. Since the 1970s, China has practiced this type of economy. They even created special economic zones where foreign industries could come in and they could own companies within China's borders. Prior to 1970, that was unheard of. The leading economic activity in China is agriculture and farming. China is a leading producer of several different crops, such as rice in the southeastern parts of China, wheat in the northeast, and corn in the central northern plains region. While agriculture is the leading industry, only about 15 percent of their land is usable for farming. The huge Chinese labor force, as well as creative use of their land, allows them to grow enough food to feed their massive population. The Chinese use irrigation systems, as well as terraces cut into the hillside in order to use their land more effectively. Because of foreign investments, other Chinese industries have grown rapidly. China produces everything from satellites and chemicals to clothing and toys. China's economic growth has led to improved wages and living standards in China. Most Chinese citizens now have electricity, even in rural areas. More Chinese citizens can afford many of the goods that are made in China, such as TVs, computers, and even cars. Economic freedom has led to more political freedom in China. The communist government controls most areas of life, including newspapers, television stations, and internet access. This inhibits the spread of information and ideas. China harshly punishes people who oppose the government. One example of this happened in 1989 when more than 1,000 pro-democracy protesters gathered at the Chinese capital in Beijing. They met in a place called Tiananmen Square and demanded more political rights and freedoms. When the protesters refused to leave, the government brought in troops and tanks to make them leave. Hundreds of protesters were killed, more were injured or imprisoned. Most of China's people live in small rural villages. Farmers work in the fields using the same methods and tools they have for decades. While some people's standards of living have improved, a lot of rural China still suffers from the same disadvantages. Many people are leaving China's villages for the urban centers. 
This graph shows how China's urban population is expected to grow in the very near future. China's growing economy has led to its rapid urban growth. China boasts seven cities with a population of greater than seven million people. Let's take a look at a few of those cities right now. China's largest city is Shanghai, boasting over 15 million people. It's China's leading industrial seaport and also commercial center. Now, Shanghai was once a swampy fishing village. Now, it's China's largest city, eighth largest in the world. It's also the world's busiest seaport. Beijing is China's second largest city and its capital. Beijing is an interesting mix of new and old. In central Beijing, large walls hide the golden roof palace as the forbidden city. Once off limits to all but the emperor's family and servants, it now serves as a museum open to the public. Hong Kong is about the size of Washington, D.C. It is made of nearly 200 islands and is a major port city in southern China. Like India, Hong Kong used to be a colony of the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom returned Hong Kong to China in 1997. Hong Kong is a very wealthy city. They have more Rolls Royces, which is a really fancy car per person than any other city. And they have more skyscrapers than any other city in the world. China's economic growth has created serious environmental problems. One of their biggest problems is pollution. The large cars and factories pollute both the air and water. In order to run the factories and create electricity, China burns coal, which further pollutes the air. Deforestation has also caused major problems in China. China has cut down forests to build cities and has to replace those trees. And many of China's largest cities are on their best farmland, wasting that resource. One of the ways that China is trying to address these environmental concerns is by using hydroelectric power, electricity produced by dams. The Three Gorges Dam, seen in this clip, is the world's largest dam and produces as much power as 15 coal-burning power plants. However, water from the dam's reservoir now covers hundreds of towns, huge amounts of farmland. Animals and people have been displaced. As the water filled in the reservoir behind the dam, it actually slowed down the Earth's rotation by a fraction.